So good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome in from around the world. We have a truly global audience and the best dance party classes we've ever had in the background of one of our openings. So kudos to all of you. My name is Jesse and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I know we've got a lot of familiar faces today, but we do have a bunch of new classes as well. And so welcome to our program where we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. Now, when I explain my job to people, I tell them I get to hang out with cave divers and astronauts, explorers galore, some of the coolest people on this planet. And they find that pretty cool. People find that a, a neat gig to have. I certainly feel very lucky. I pinch myself for my job. But when I tell people that I get to hang out with sloths, their mind explodes because sloths are the absolute coolest. And so today, you guys are all in for a treat. We are joined live by Andrea at the Toucan Rescue Ranch in amazing Costa Rica, where she's going to walk us through their incredible facility caring for injured wildlife. They rescue, rehabilitate, and re-release injured creatures of all kinds. But today, we are going to focus on sloths together. And I can't wait. I'm sure you can't wait either. And so without further ado, Andrea, I'm going to bring you on into the broadcast and take us <laughs> on a tour. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you, Jesse. And thank you, all of you guys, for joining us. <laughs> I hope that you have a lot of fun learning about sloths here at the Toucan Rescue Ranch. Um, so to explain you a little bit more about what we do here, we are both the rescue center and a sanctuary. So as a rescue center, as Jesse already explained, we always try to rescue, rehabilitate and rewild animals um, so they can go back into the wild uh, whenever possible. If it's not possible because of certain reasons that, for example, they were kept as pets for a long time, um, they are too injured to go back into the wild. Um, some of them cannot fly anymore or cannot climb or anything. Then they will stay at the sanctuary with us. So here I'm going to be on both sides. I'm going to be both at the re rehab area and at the sanctuary side. So on the rehab area, of course, I want to start with our really, really adorable friends in here. So I'm going to switch my camera. So you guys can see the adorable babies that <laughs> probably Jesse talks about <laughs> to all of his friends that he hangs out with. All of these is baby sloths here. So at the Toucan Rescue Ranch, of course, as our name says, we specialize a little bit more on toucans, or that's what we did at the very, very beginning. But then we started moving on a little bit with sloths. So... Toucan Rescue Ranch was um, started in 2004, and it was not until 2007 that we started rescuing sloths. I'm going to try to show you guys our first ever sloth later, um, if she wants to get out, uh, because she was sleeping. Actually, all of the adults were sleeping. Um, and so when we started rescuing sloths, people didn't believe it was possible to hand raise a baby sloth and then put them back into the wild. So at the very beginning, that was not like our main purpose. Um, it was just basically, you know, raising them so that they could be healthy and um, that they could thrive. But then in 2016, our founders thought that there should be something more for our sloths rather than staying in captivity because we were being so successful in raising them and not a lot of people were that successful um, that we wanted to start with our amazing Saving Sloths Together program. So with the SSD program, what we aim is to try to raise baby sloths that come here because of various reasons, all of them orphaned, and try to give them that second chance so that they can go back into the wild. So in here, right now we're actually in both in, in the nursery and preschool. The babies on these buckets and the and these two buckets are more like in, in preschool because they're bigger. They're actually just about to go to elementary school. Whenever they reach a kilogram, they will head over to the elementary. <laughs> so in here, we have the babies that are teeny tiny that still need a lot of milk, <laughs> a lot of care. And um, they start learning how to exercise. So they start learning how to climb over here. You can see that they have leaves that they can chew, that they can eat whenever they're hungry. Um, and they also still get five times a day fed with milk. Um, we use goat's milk because unlike um, like many, many, many other mammals, they actually cannot process lactose like um, cow's milk. And so if it's not their mother's milk, we have to give them a goat's milk that is really yummy for them. 
Um, so we have Colin and Talula over here. I'm actually surprised that both of them are still sleeping because whenever they hear someone, <laughs> they wake up and looks like they're really, really fast asleep, which is good. Then we also have Pringle and Tavita over here, also snoozing a little bit. <laughs> they just had breakfast, so they're just resting their breakfast. <laughs> then I've got baby Weenie over here, and I see someone waking up. Wait a second so you guys can meet Reggae. <laughs> Hi, Reggae. <laughs> so Reggae over here, he is a three-finger sloth. So in the world, there are two-fingered and three-finger sloths, and they're super different from one another. So a lot of people will call them two-toed or three-toed sloths. I like to call them two-fingered because it's actually on their fingers and their hands that it changes. So three-finger sloths, they have three fingers on their hands. You can see that in reggae over here. Hey, stay still. <laughs> will you show? Thank you. <laughs> That's one of her hands, of his hand. <laughs> so you can see that he has three fingers. And then if you see baby Winnie over here, you'll see that he, she has two fingers on he, his hand. <laughs> also, the color is really, really different. Three-finger sloths have, like, more grayish hair. Um, Two-finger sloths have, like, more darkish color of their fur. Um, they can also be, like, blonde, or they can have, like, a mix of dark and blonde. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, the three-finger sloths, like reggae, they are a bit slower than the two-finger sloths. Two-finger sloths, whenever they're feeling determined to move fast, they can be really, really fast when moving. Actually, what people refer to as the slowest animal on Earth, they're not referring on how they move, on how fast or slow they move. They're referring to their metabolism. So their metabolism and their digestive system is really, really slow. It can take them up to a month to digest what they eat on a week. Uh, for us, it just takes like a couple of days to digest what we eat um, on our breakfast, for, for example. <laughs> and so I want you guys to think, I don't know if you've ever thought of this, but I want you guys to think just for a second, how many times a week do you guys go to the bathroom? Have you ever like had that thought? <laughs> do you go every day to the bathroom? Do you go like three times a day to the bathroom? Well... Sloths, they only go once a week to the bathroom. <laughs> Can you imagine just going once a week to poo and pee? And sometimes they actually go every other week. So it's not every single week that they go to the bathroom. Um, so that's really, really surprising. And uh, that's why whenever they want to go to the bathroom, their bellies will be, will be like super big and bloated. And you will know when they want to go to the bathroom because of how their belly looks. Actually, it's a shame that she's sleeping, but Serena, one of her two finger sloth babies, she always has a huge belly. So we're not sure if she like she always wants to go to the bathroom or, or that or if it's that she's really chubby. <laughs> Here you can see Regis tail. I mean, look at that really adorable tail. <laughs> it's not a lot of times that you get to see that tail. <laughs> so Actually, there was a study that someone did um, where they give, where they gave like um, kind of like a bowl that the sloth wouldn't be able to digest, but they would be able to poop out <laughs> uh, to see how many days it would last, um, like it would take for that bowl to be digested um, and pooped. So it actually took 26 days for the sloth to poop out that bowl. Can you imagine <laughs> 26 days to go to the bathroom? So that's always really, really interesting. <laughs> now it looks like Reggae here is practicing his climbing skills and I cannot be happier about that um, <laughs> because that means that with every little milestone that he does, um, he will get to go back into the wild really, really soon. <laughs> and he's also getting stronger. <laughs> right, Reggae? So I want you guys to know some differences between two-fingered and three-finger sloths. With reggae, it's really, really easy to see some characteristics. Um, since most of the babies are sleeping right now, I'm just going to show you a picture that I have on my cell phone. 
<laughs> this is baby Colin. He was just scratching himself the other day. <laughs> so you can see some differences between these two guys. I already talked about the color of the hair. Also, this adorable tail that Reggae has, two finger slots don't have that tail. So you can see on his butt, <laughs> he's missing his tail. <laughs> um, then you can see that Reggae has like two um, stripes down his eyes that the two finger slots don't have. <laughs> One of my favorite characteristics about two finger slots is that they have like these piggy nose that is so adorable that three finger slots don't have. <laughs> also, let me find another picture where you can find it um, a little bit easier. But two finger sloths, they have like pa patches, um, like pads on their hands and their feet. Let me see if I can find a picture of, of that. But two fingers, uh, three finger sloths like reggae, they do not have those pads on their feet. And I cannot find the picture, but well, you can see it a little bit on Colin's picture here. But you can see these pads on their feet and their hands. And <laughs> Reggie here, will you show them to, you, to us, please? <laughs> no, he's too focused climbing. <laughs> um, but you can see that he does not have these pads over there. <laughs> Hi, Reggie. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Are you practicing your role for Godzilla? <laughs> Another difference from two-fingered and three-fingered slots is that you can tell if it's a boy or a girl just by looking at their back, especially with the three-fingered slots. So when they are adults, the boys, they will develop like a black patch of hair on their backs that the females will not have. So, um, okay, I do have a picture of that here somewhere. Okay. This is... A three finger sloth male, an adult one. So you can see these black patch of hair over here. And you tell me, don't you see that with reggae? Like, he's just starting to develop that black patch of hair. <laughs> some of us say, well, some, some of the caretakers say that they think reggae is going to be a female, a girl. But I'm really, really sure that reggae is actually going to be a boy. Because seriously, look at that patch of hair. <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie, our founder, she told us that she saw some polka dots uh, under his hair. So probably he's going to be a boy. Now, you're never going to see like his testicles because with the slots, they're um, inside their body. Um, so it's really, really difficult to tell if it's a male or a female just by looking at them. And then with the two finger slots, they don't have these black patch of hair. Um, actually, as one of them that taught me... Um, if you see like a small volcano, then that's a male. And if not, then that's a female. <laughs> now, what did these guys eat? Three finger sloths, they are mainly folivores. And being a folivore means that they mainly eat just leaves. They can also start eating flowers and sometimes seeds or seed pods um, or fruits. But their main, main diet are leaves. There's actually a leaf over here that Reggae was eating. So that's a Cecropia leaf, and that's one of their favorite ones. <laughs> and then the two-finger sloths, even though they also eat leaves, and that's one of their favorite meals, um, they can also eat lizards, eggs, maybe probably baby birds as well, if they find like a nest up on a tree. Um, they can also start eating bark from the branches, like over here. Um, flowers and seeds and fruits and a lot of other different things. Actually, if you guys like avocados, the giant sloths that live years ago, now unfortunately we do not have any giant sloths on the world living right now, um, but the giant sloths were the ones that started dispersing uh, the avocado leaves. So sloths, they loved to eat avocados. And so whenever they ate the avocado, they ate it as a whole with all of the seed. And so whenever they went to the bathroom, they will poop out the seed and the seed would start growing out of their poop. Isn't that cool? <laughs> That's what we call a seed disperser animal. Monkeys, squirrels, um, a lot of birds like the toucans and parrots. They're also seed dispersers because they eat a lot of fruits and um, they also get to eat like the seeds sometimes and they will just poop out the seeds. 
and they will have their own fertilizer. <laughs> and talking about poop, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a really, really random question, but I can show you guys how their poop looks like. I don't know if you've ever wondered <laughs> how a sloth poop looks like. So right here, I'm entering sloth um, high school. So the older babies, we take them here. They have their trees over here, so they get to sleep on top of the trees. Um, they get to start eating from the leaves and everything so that they're not like on an indoor enclosure like they were um, over there in the nursery over here. Uh, they have more fresh air and they can start developing a little more uh, wild behaviors. I actually have Rudy over here sleeping on his hammock, <laughs> catching some sun. Let me see if I can see. He's hello, Rudy. Rudy is short for Rudolph. He arrived in Christmas of last year. Hello. <laughs> and so their poop. I saw that they pooped today. <laughs> So it is a, actually a really nice day to show you guys their poop. So this is how it looks like. <laughs> there, it's like deer poop as well. So it's really, really small. And so <laughs> they will go down to the bottom of a tree to poop. They will not poop up on a tree, even though they live most of their lives up on a tree. So they're really, really vulnerable to predators um, like wildcats or hogs, eagles, and sometimes dogs, which is a really big issue why we have to rescue sloths over here. They get attacked by dogs. And so it's really, really fun to see the sloths pooping because they will have like these really happy face. <laughs> and I mean, why wouldn't they be happy? They're going to the bathroom after a whole week of, you know, um, holding their need to go <laughs> so let me find another picture i'm full of pictures here that's one of the good things of working with animals you get to take so many adorable pictures <laughs> so i have a picture of georgie <laughs> he was pooping and peeing the other day <laughs> so you can see that really really happy face they make uh, when they're going to the bathroom <laughs> You can actually see some pee over here. <laughs> so they first pee and then they go um, and poop. <laughs> and so is there uh, any other sloths that you've got at the facility right now? Like how many do you have there at the moment? We have a bunch of sloths right now. Um, so we have 10 babies in the nursery. We have three babies here in preschool. There are two babies sleeping over here, Nosara and Maku. And well, you got you already saw um, Rudy on the hammock. We also have six permanent residents living here at the ranch. I can actually go and take you guys there. Um, and we have around like other five or six sloths in the clinic. So the ones in the clinic, they are receiving extra care and extra love. They're not feeling too well, and that's why they have to be kept over there. Um, but the vets and the doctors are making sure that they're comfortable and that, you know, they will still be rehabilitated so that they can go back into the wild. Fantastic. And so, Ellie, are you going to take Millie? Okay. Okay. All righty. I can actually show you guys one of our permanent residents and... Mealy the sloth. <laughs> she was the first one we got to rescue and she is out here enjoying or I don't know if she's enjoying it or not. <laughs> uh, because even though she has a big structure just for herself, she prefers to be looking for her blankets and her bucket. That's how spoiled she is. <laughs> and so <laughs> this is the structure that we have for the adults so that they can exercise and be around. But no. Mealy prefers to be down here on a corner. <laughs> Hello. And there's her bucket. Ellie, one of the caretakers, just put the bucket over here. So I'm pretty sure that as long as, as soon as she smells the bucket, she's going to go right for the bucket. <laughs> right, pretty girl? <laughs> so this is Mealy's birthday month, and she is turning 15 years old this year. So... I'm pretty sure that we're going to throw a really nice quinceañera party for her <laughs> on her birthday. Right, Millie? <laughs> so, Jesse, I don't know if there are any questions so far. 
We're already getting quite a few questions in YouTube and we've got all our live classes. So why don't we dive in with the Q&A period and then if there's anything else you want to show us, you can walk us there as we go along. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, first of all, I, you know what? I don't need to talk. I'll leave our, our amazing Millie on the screen for us, everybody. Um, <laughs> But I do want to note, too, uh, for some of our classes that might be familiar, we've been doing Kahoot quizzes during these programs, but we made a really beautiful one with the Toucan Rescue Ranch team. So I'll make sure that all our registered classes have this link if you want to follow up this program and learn more, have a fun game with your class around our slots. So live classes, I'm going to give you guys a second to put your thinking caps on and think about some of our questions, but I'll take one from YouTube to kick us off. So our Alamosa online school wants to know, our fourth grader wants to know if the babies like to play with one another and do they ever accidentally hurt each other or anything, Andrea? <laughs> um, hurting each other here, I don't, I don't think so. Like maybe they can scratch themselves or something, but they actually have to learn. <laughs> um, so sloths are solitary by nature, so you will never find them like living on a family or anything. Uh, but here, the babies, we like to raise them together um, so they can learn wild behaviors from one, one another, and it will be easier for them to go back into the wild. And so playing with each other and fighting with each other as well are things that they actually need to learn in order to be going back into the wild whenever they're ready. <laughs> Hi, Millie. It's like, uh, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with live animal interactions, but we've got a real friendly, she, our small friend wants to say hi to all of you guys in, at home. This is what she wants me is to take her to her enclosure as well. Ah, uh, there we are. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take one more from YouTube and then Hughes Academy. If you guys want to put the chat, great. Miss Nilva, I'll be coming to you guys first live in a second. But our question from Spider-Man online. Spider-Man wants to know, how long does it take for a sloth to climb a tree? Well, that's a really nice question. Um, sometimes it can take a matter of seconds. <laughs> um, sometimes it can take quite a while for them to climb up on a tree. <laughs> it can take a matter of seconds or a matter of, of minutes um, if they're really, really determined to go up on a tree. Um, so for example, if there was a boy looking for a girlfriend, <laughs> then they will want to be like super, super fast to get to the tree. Um, if there was a predator, like a wildcat, for example, that wanted to hunt, um, let's say Neely, that she was climbing up on this tree, then Neely would like to be like super, super fast um, so that she's away from the predator. <laughs> so it really, really depends on the circumstances. Yeah, I mean, we might get to see it in action in just a second, which is great. Um, let's head to our Hughes Academy friends. Welcome in, in Greenville, South Carolina, Ms. Arbuckle's class. Hi, sixth graders. So Ms. Arbuckle's class wanted to know, how old are they when they normally get released back into the wild, Andrea? Wait. She's going inside her bucket. <laughs> so she doesn't give us any action here. <laughs> She's just getting ready to be taken to her enclosure. <laughs> You're so silly. Um, so it can take us up to like two years uh, for them to go back into the wild. So those babies that we saw, um, like um, Colin and Talula and Reggae, it might take us around like a year and a half to two years to see them wild again. <laughs> um, with the ones in the clinic, of course, it always depends on how fast they heal um, and if they're completely ready to go back into the wild. <laughs> you can clearly see why Millie was not able to go back <laughs> into the wild. Um, if she doesn't have her bucket and if she doesn't have her blankets, she will not go to sleep. <laughs> and She will start protesting and doing a tantrum so <laughs> yeah she's I, really I think, I think we all feel that way sometimes within our personal buckets yeah. of life, so. <laughs> yeah, this is great um miss nilbo's class Los Lunas, new mexico if you guys want to come on in for a question you are good to go guys do sloths like to bond with other animals besides the predator do sloths like to bond with other animals yes so, Andrea, do sloths bond with any other animals besides each other? No, they actually not. And they actually do not bond with each other. Um, the babies, like, even though we're raising them together, they will be a point in their lives will, where they will want to be independent and they will actually start fighting with each other over for territory. Um, so they will be like, go away, <laughs> this is my house, or this is my tree, and so they will start fighting with each other, and that bond <laughs> that they created when they were babies, it will basically break. 
Okay, fascinating. Great question, guys. All right, let's go to Ms. Gertzen's class. Bueller, Kansas, if you guys want to unmute your mic. In fact, all our teachers, keep your mics unmuted. I can't hear you till I bring you in, but come on in, in uh, Kansas. Hey, guys. Okay. Yeah, you're What's the most interesting thing you've ever seen or done? Ooh, the most interesting thing you've seen at the ranch. Oh, I mean, every single day I see interesting things in here. <laughs> uh, I get to learn so many different things from these guys. Um, let's see. At least with the slots, one of the most interesting things that I've seen them doing is that for some of the rescued ones that got electrocuted, um, unfortunately, because of the burn wounds and everything, we need to amputate a part of their limb or their whole limb, like their whole arm. And so something really interesting that I've seen them doing is actually climbing with just three limbs. So they can still get to go back into the wild, even though they're missing their whole arm. And so that's always something really, really interesting to see that resilience and see that strong that they get, that they have. Um, so they never stop surprising me. <laughs> Fantastic. What a great story. And how cuddled and cute is that? My God. <laughs> Uh, let's head to Miss Flood's class, Cyril Varney Public School in Ontario, our first Canadian crew. Uh, come on in, guys. Take us away. Hey. Hello. 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 Do you have a question for Andrea today? Yes. Um, my question is, um, do sloths always look like they have a smile on their face? That's a great question, and that's a fact and a question that you might find on the Kahoot quiz that we did. <laughs> um, so yes, they always look that they're, they're smiling and that's because they lack of facial muscles. So for example, us, we can frown our faces, we can smile, uh, we can look sad, but with sloths, since they lack of muscle, fa um, um, facial muscles, they cannot do that. So they're, they will always appear that they're smiling. And that can be a misconception, especially if you get closer to a sloth. You might think that the sloth actually likes it and that they want you to be closer to them and everything, but that's not always the case. Like, almost always it's not the case. They actually do not want to be closer to people. Millie, she has been 15 years around people, so she's pretty chill around people, but I still have to be super, super careful around her but she, because she can bite me if she gets annoyed. So I can, I need to keep my distance from her, of course. Um, so it can be difficult to actually tell if they're getting angry, if they're getting annoyed. You have to look at their facial expressions. Basically, if they start, they start like clacking their teeth or opening their mouth and or yawning a lot. Um, if they start like trying to reach for you with your arm, that means that they want to scratch you <laughs> or that they want to grab you to bite you. So. All of those things you have to be uh, to take into consideration when you have a sloth in front of you. <laughs> it's not that they're smiling and that they're enjoying the moment. <laughs> I'm really glad we brought that up, Andrea. And I mean, in general, one of the lessons that we always share in these programs with you is the idea that you should always respect animals in the wild. It's almost never appropriate to run up and try and touch an animal or grab an animal. So if you give animals that little bit of space, you can watch them act more naturally. They're beautiful. You have the chance to have that incredible experience, but do leave them alone in, in about 99.9% .9 of cases. So uh, mm -hmm. even whether it's adorable as Millie here, I mean, that is it's pretty amazing, but uh, a very good note. Guys, you also, two more, two more live, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, sorry. Not that also in captivity, because not only in the wild should we let them like be by themselves, also in captivity, like I would also like to encourage you guys that if you ever have the chance to, you know, go to a, a road day zoo or a zoo that will let you pet a sloth or a baby lion or whatever other animal, do not go to that, those kinds of places because they really do not care about their animals. They just want more money. Um, so they're not treating their animals as they should. It's actually a really red flag if you go to a place where they will let you um, pet these animals because they do not want to be petted by people. Fantastic. Um, we've got three more live classes. I'm coming to you guys in order. We'll take a few from YouTube. We're whipping through this question period. Let's head to our CGS friends in uh, Ontario as well. Welcome in Michelle Luke's class in Toronto. Hi, guys. <laughs> you have a question for us? Come on up. Hi. How long can sloths live? Ooh, good question. Okay. That is a really good question and, and a question that I never have an answer for <laughs> because 
unfortunately, there's still not a lot of research being done on sloths. So there hasn't been anyone that has been following a sloth from the moment they're born till the moment they die. So we're really not sure their life expectancy. We here at the ranch, we like to say that they live somewhere between 20 and 30 years. Um, but it could be more, it could be less. <laughs> we really do not know. I know that there is a zoo in Germany that has a sloth that is 50 years old. Wow. That's yes. wild for an animal of that size. That's really, really unusual. So again, a testament yeah. to that you talked about great zoos and great aquariums. Places that are at the highest standards of animal care, you'll often have animals live longer than they would in the wild because they have that care, they have the medical help, they have the food every day provided for them. Um, but that's an, an incredible stat. Great question, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, let's head to Brownsburg, Indiana. It's so rare we have an Indiana class on one of these programs. It's so nice to have our climb crew in today. Uh, so come on up, everybody. Hi. Hello. 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 <laughs> All right, our question is, how many hours does a sloth normally sleep in a day? Nice. Okay, let me ask you guys, how many time, how many hours a day do you think they sleep? Ooh, okay, Klein Crew, I'm going to bring you back in. What do we think? How many hours? How many hours? What do you guys think? 20 hours. 20 hours. 20 hours. 20 hours. I keep, hearing, I keep hearing 20 from a lot of people, so only That's four hours a week a day. Is that true? Not true. <laughs> they actually sleep from 10 to 15 hours a day, so like some humans <laughs> that want to sleep longer during the day, they can sleep from 10 to 15 hours, so it's not as much. <laughs> some of our students might have slept 10 to 11 hours this morning. Today, so there you go. So common misconception, I mean, they're, they're slower, doesn't necessarily mean they sleep a lot of the day. One of the creatures that we love highlighting that does sleep for a ridiculous amount of time every day are lions. Everyone pictures lions as these heavy duty predators running around all the time. They are so lazy. Sloths have lions beat by a huge margin. So great question, guys. All right, last but not least in our live classes, we're going to uh, Austin, Texas with your amazing bat colony, by the way. It's incredible there. To Clayton Elementary, Miss Conlon's class. Welcome here, guys. Hey. Hello, hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you have a question for Andrea today? Yes. Loud and proud, honey. Is there any any other animals there? Yeah, anything yeah. other than sloths? Yes, we have a bunch of animals in here. We have um, toucans, we have monkeys, we have an otter, parrots, macaws, owls. We have a bunch of different animals over here. <laughs> Nice. By the way, for our, our teachers that might be new to this, all the programs you've ever done with the ranch are on YouTube. So if you want to see those toucans and otters and all those other amazing features, check them out on our YouTube page. There's some incredible videos there. You can also, you also sign up for um, a virtual classroom. Yes. So I'll make sure that all our classes have the link to your program. So toucanrescueranch.org at toucanrescue. If you want to learn more about the ranch, check out the stuff they're doing. There's so many amazing resources there. Um, and I'll make sure people get that at the end of the broadcast as Thank well. You. <laughs> all right. I'm going to take a few from YouTube really quick and then we'll come back to our live classes. We're going really fast through these. Let me know in the chat if you do need to go in five minutes and I'll come to you guys first. But let's take a few from YouTube. So Miss Thompson's class wants to know, what type of leaves do they eat? Oh, well, good thing I just <laughs> uh, stopped. This is a poro leaf. This is one of the two finger sloths' favorite leaf. Um, so they're found here in Costa Rica. Actually, the poro tree comes from Africa, <laughs> um, but it is now naturalized here in Costa Rica, so you can find them everywhere. And they really, really like to eat these leaves. They also like to eat the almond leaves um, from the almond tree. Um, that's where the babies in high school were um, on an almond tree. So they're learning how to eat from there. Um, three finger slots, on the other hand, they like to eat a little bit more on um, cecropia leaves and guaruma leaves, which is um, a tree that you will only, only find here in, in Central and South America. Very, very <laughs> cool. Great question, guys. All right, let's head to Ms. Oliver's class. They want to know. How long are sloth mothers pregnant? How long does it take for them to be born? Okay, that is a really good question. So it takes more than us humans for them to have their babies. This is Tai, by the way. Just saw him that he was having breakfast. Um, so with the two-finger sloths, it can be from 11 months and a half to 12 months. 
So almost a year. <laughs> and with the three finger slots, oops, sorry. Um, it can be around like 11 months as well. So it's a really, really long time. And another really cool fact about their pregnancy is that just after giving birth to their babies, they can get pregnant around like three months after having their baby. Okay, fascinating. And by the way, thank you for taking us to our eating slot now. This is very cool to see. <laughs> best, best slot tour of all time today. Um, <laughs> we're gonna head back to New Mexico, Miss Nilbo's class. Come on in guys, hey. Hello. Hello. Do sloths know how to swim? Do sloths know how to swim, Andrew? Do know how to swim. They're actually really, really good swimmers, especially the three finger sloths. It's not that they spend much time in the water, but if they need to cross a river to get to the other side, or maybe there's a female calling for a, a boyfriend, then the boys, they will swim to the other side to get to the female. <laughs> I encourage our classes to uh, one of the major nature documentaries in the last few years had footage of sloths swimming on camera. It's really cool to see. Not as cool as that nose right up to the camera though. Hey, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Let's head to Ms. Gurchin's class. Kansas, welcome in, guys. Hello again, Ms. Gurchin's class. My Hi. name is... Yeah. My name Presley, is there any surprising facts that, about sloths? Ooh, surprising facts. No pressure, Andrea. Oh, um, what to say? I mean, everything is surprising about the sloths. Let me just give a flower to Ty. Um, let's see. One of the most surprising facts I can think of right now is that sloths, they have six chambers in their stomach. So cows, for example, they have four chambers in their stomach, and that's because they eat a lot of leaves. Um, but since the sloths also eat lots of leaves, they have six chambers. And so in each chamber, they have a lot of friendly bacteria that will help them um, digest all of the leaves that they have. No animal on earth is actually made to digest leaves. So for example, for us to eat our lettuce or our spinach, <laughs> um, we also have a lot of bacteria in our stomachs that will help us process all of those leaves that they eat, that we eat. Very, very cool. All right. I didn't know that about them. Uh, let's head for our last three questions. This has been great, guys. Miss Flood's class, you're up first. CGS and Miss Conlon will wrap up with you in Texas. Hi, Miss Flood's group. Unmute your mic and you're good to go. Hi. 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 Go ahead, Michaela. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on YouTube. <laughs> How many sloths do? How many babies do sloths usually have? And have you ever had them be born in the sanctuary? Great. Okay. And thank you so much. Uh huh. So sloths only have one baby at a time. It's really, really rare. There's this TV. It's really rare if they have twins. If they do have twins, even though these these will sound like super, super cruel, but they cannot take care of two babies at the same time. So they will most likely abandon and like leave away one of the babies because they cannot take care of them. Um, and here at the ranch, nope, we have never had a baby sloth um, being born in here because we actually do not breed our animals. Um, so all of the babies that we have, all of them are rescues because they were orphaned. So it could have been that their mothers sadly passed away or maybe they abandoned the babies or there is an illness to the baby that the mother was not able to take care of the baby. Okay, great question, guys. By the way, we've got flower eating, we've got scratching, we've got crawling <laughs> on the ground, we've got everything today. This is amazing. Um, yes, Ms. Luke's class, come on in. And Ms. Conlon, you're next. Hi, Ms. Luke. Hi. Do the sloths ever hug you? Do they ever hug you? <laughs> no, I really do not want them to hug me, <laughs> especially because of these two claws that they have on each of their hands. And also, I don't know if you got to see it, but sloths also have really, really big teeth. So if they try to hug me, they will most likely try to bite me. And that's something that I really, really do not want to happen. Look at those teeth. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so sloths, for them to be hanging from upside down, like Ty over here and Stevie, they have to be super, super strong. Now, look at these claws. <laughs> if they try to, like, if Stevie tries to grab me by the arm, she can tear onto my skin and she can cause a lot of damage that I really, really do not want. <laughs> So really cute, really adorable, but as Andrew has been mentioning, you don't really want to interact with them too much. The whole goal is to get them back into the wild when you can. Some of the permanent residents still maintain that little bit of distance, and it really goes a long way to keeping them as wild as possible. Great question. Mm -hmm. All right, Austin, Texas, to wrap us up, Miss Conlon's class. Hi, guys. Hi. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, do um, claws, I mean, do sloths dig with their claws? Ooh. They do not dig with their claws because they're normally not like down on the ground. Um, but they do like if they want to dig something, they will do like a booty dance on the floor so that they can hide their poop. <laughs> but they really do not like bur um, dig burrows or anything. All right. Guys, we could talk all day. We've got more questions in the chat than we could possibly answer in one broadcast. But what I want to do is make sure that you guys have the resources to keep the learning going. So again, check out our Kahoot Challenge. The game pin is below. I put that in the YouTube chat for everybody and in the chat here in StreamYard. I'll also forward it to all our registered classes for today if you want to keep that learning going about sloths and test your knowledge for bragging rights. But the best way you can keep going and learning more about the Rescue Ranch is to head to their website, toucanrescueranch.org. Check them out on social media at Toucan Rescue. So much to discover there. And thank you all so, so much for joining us for such a fun and beautiful program today. Uh, Andrea, is there a last message you want to leave us on with sloths before we bring in our classes to say farewell? No, I mean... Keep on going with um, with the eagerness to learn. <laughs> there are so many things to learn about sloths and about so many other animals. Um, you guys can help us with the sloths, like taking care of them. If you want to join on a virtual classroom and learn more about them, you can definitely do so. As a class, you can also adopt an animal or a species, and that's also really fun. And yeah, just keep on learning. Um, and yeah, <laughs> keep on... Um, protecting the animals as well, even from your house. That's if you have social media or whenever you get to have social media, if you follow people that have animals as pets or that let people, you know, hold animals or hog animals, then you should unfollow those people because they do not care about their animals. They're just wanting more followers and more likes. And that's not what it should be about. <laughs> it should be about conservation and following the right people. Well, you guys do such incredible work. So again, I do encourage all our classes, check you guys out on Toucan Rescue or at Toucan Rescue. Some amazing stuff going on there. And our classes have raised well over a few thousand dollars over the last few years for your efforts to save sloths and so many other species. So thank you so much for these great programs. And as you know, we wrap up every broadcast by bringing in our classes to say a big thank you and farewell. So Miss Nilbo's class, Miss Gertz's class, Miss Flood and Miss Conlon, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. Yeah.